Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for October 16th. October 16th is the 289th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 290th in leap years, with 76 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is ostensibly. Ostensibly is an adverb that means apparently or purportedly, <laughs> but perhaps not actually. What a great word. I'd like to take a moment to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Stay to the end for the outtakes that we will undoubtedly have. <laughs> and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Remember that you can share this video with others with the link in your email, messaging, or social media. And also there is a link in the show notes to the This Day in History playlist, as well as in the corner up there, an iCard on YouTube. If you're watching on Vimeo, it will just be in the show notes. I moved the camera to portrait instead of landscape, and so the, the lens is in a different position, and I... I keep not looking at the lens of the camera. <laughs> and with that, let's start with the birthday of Noah Webster, born October 16th, 1758. If that name seems familiar, you might have heard of Webster's Dictionary. Indeed, he was an English language spelling reformer. In addition to the dictionary, he wrote a book called The Blue-Backed Speller, from which generations of children have learned to spell. Noah Webster lived to the age of 84. Wow, yesterday Marie Antoinette was tried and convicted of treason. Talk about privilege. I imagine she loved being the Queen of France. She spent extravagantly and encouraged her husband, Louis XVI, to resist reform to the monarchy. She liked being the boss, wanted to keep being the boss. There's a legend in which starving peasants who couldn't even get any bread nor even any flour to make bread with, stormed the castle in protest. The legend has it while they were throwing an extravagant dinner party of all things. When informed that the peasantry were outraged because they didn't have any bread to eat, she flippantly said, let them eat cake. <laughs> That's not the right way to behave. So, yesterday she was tried and convicted, and da da da, da today she was beheaded. On October 16, 1834, fire destroyed much of the medieval royal palace used as the home of the British Parliament. Queen's University was founded in the province of Canada on October 16, 1841. This is the birthday of Irish playwright, novelist, and poet Oscar Wilde, born October 16, 1854. He lived to the age of 46. On October 16, 1846, a dentist named William Thomas Green Morton gave the first public demonstration of general anesthesia using ether. A famous American archaeological find, the Cardiff Giant, was discovered on October 16, 1869. Presented as a petrified man, the figure was, well, is, because it still exists, <laughs> the figure is 10 feet, 4 and a half inches tall and weighs nearly a ton and a half. Turns out it was a hoax carved of limestone. You can actually still see the sedimentary layering in the stone. The fellow who engineered this hoax went to elaborate and expensive measures to pull it off, but he made it back all that money and more. The original Cardiff giant figure currently resides at the Farmer's Museum in Cooperstown, New York. And if you'd like to learn more about the Cardiff Giant, I've placed a link in the show notes for you. I've actually placed a couple of links in the show notes for you, one about the giant and one about the Farmer's Museum in Cooperstown. So you see next spring after Memorial Day, when you plan your trip to visit Cooperstown, ostensibly to visit the Hall of Fame, <laughs> You want to do that as soon after Memorial Day as you can. You can be sure to give yourself an extra day to visit the Farmer's Museum and see the Cardiff Giant. Brigham Young University was founded in Provo, Utah on October 16, 
1875. This is the birthday of American playwright and Nobel Prize laureate Eugene O'Neill, born October 16, 1888. He wrote plays that were among the first to include speeches in American English vernacular and to involve characters on the fringes of society who struggled to maintain their hopes and aspirations, but ultimately slid into disillusionment and despair. Pretty much true life stuff there. Not much for comedy, Eugene O'Neill. He lived to the age of 65. Margaret Sanger opened the first family planning clinic in Brooklyn, New York on October 16, 1916. Adolf Hitler delivered his first public address at a meeting of the German Workers' Party on October 16, 1919. The Walt Disney Company was founded on October 16, 1923. This is the birthday of English-American actress Angela Lansbury, born October 16, 1925. She has a lengthy career acting in radio and stage plays, movies, and television productions, since 1943. I have binge-watched her as Jessica Fletcher in the TV show Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> Bless her heart, she's still alive and turns 95 in 2020. Chinese communists began what is known as the Long March on October 16, 1934. In a follow-up to the Nuremberg trials, 10 defendants found guilty by the International Military Tribunal were executed by hanging on October 16, 1946. This is the birthday of Suzanne Somers, born October 16, 1946. She did an amazing job of playing a dumb blonde on the TV show Three's Company back in the 70s. A fellow breast cancer survivor, Suzanne Somers turned 74 in 2020. China detonated its first nuclear weapon on October 16, 1964. This is the birthday of singer-songwriter John Mayer, born October 16, 1977. Now, just coming across this in the research, I could hear that first album playing in my mind. I could hear it right now. Room for Squares. I went to YouTube to find that first song, No Such Thing, to link in the show notes for you. And while I was looking for it, I came across a video of John Mayer playing backup with Leon Russell at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony for Leon Russell. I was singing a song for you. What a beautiful song. What a beautiful performance. I'll tell you what, I really had to dab my eyes on that one. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get through this without having to dab them some more. <laughs> anyway, I've linked both of those for you in the show notes. That beautiful uh, version of John Mayer playing with Leon Russell and No Such Thing. On October 16, 1978, Pope John Paul II became the first non-Italian pontiff since 1523. Remarkable. And I think that's going to do it for us today. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. I know I sure did. I always do. <laughs> As always, links to my research are in the show notes on YouTube. Also, a link in the iCards right up there. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Remember that you could share this video with others with the link in your email, messaging, or social media. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Okay, you got to be smarter than the machine. <laughs> okay, let's see if we could just get that all the way through. Wouldn't that be awesome? That sounds like a pretty ambitious project. Okay, just leave that part out. Not the first day, but the birthday. I guess the birthday is the first day. This is what happens when you don't clean up your script. <laughs> I might leave that part out. <laughs> I don't know how all that's going to go together or if it's even going to make it to the video. We'll just see. That's not going to go. Yeah, we're going to cut those out. That'll all be laying on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so I'll just do that whole thing over. <laughs> that might not make it into the video. We'll see. Changing it up. <laughs>